Terry Jacobson, Marketing Artfully. So today we're going to talk about how to set prices for your vintage items. And um, I'm going to use a tool called Marmalade. So let's just get started. So I bought this amazing um, cigarette box at an auction. And I understand that cigarettes are not cool anymore here in the United States, but they are cool around the world. Um, I sell a lot of things overseas. And also, to me, and I maybe this is just because I'm coming from Colorado where they um, legalized marijuana, if you wanted to use this for um, marijuana or any kind of hand-rolled joints, you could. I didn't put that in the... Um, in the title because or in the description or anything like that um, just because it's not legal and everywhere but it is a consideration so if you're doing something like that you really kind of need to know when you're listing your items the things that go around with it kind of think about um, who your buyer is going to be so this is going to be somebody who's going to buy a antique or vintage box to put on their desk is a little higher end buyer, right? It's not somebody who's just, um, you could buy any old tin. You don't have to have a box for your cigarettes, right? They come in a little paper box. So that's something that's a consideration for me. The other thing that's a consideration for me is how much I paid for it. So I paid $12, I paid $10 and then there is taxes and um, a 15% surcharge on all of the um, purchases I made at that auction. So I paid $12. One of the things I love to do <laughs> is to buy things that I can 10 times. That just makes it super easy, right? So if I buy something, if I buy a little tool at an estate sale and I can 10 times it, sell it for 10 or $12, that's excellent. But when sometimes when you get in these little higher priced items or buying from an auction where you get better quality things, you're not always able to 10 times it. So I was thinking three times, right? So if I made $36, if I had $36 on here, I would have $24 in profit and that's okay, right? I'm not unhappy with that. It's super easy to ship. Um, but I wanted to really get an idea of what cigarette boxes are selling for. And so I use Marmalade. Um, it's, a, it's a program. I'll put a link to it below in the, um, in the description. But so there are 6,000 total results. People get about 12 views per week. Um, there are 78,000 views per week. That's a lot. People are looking for those kind of products. And the minimum price is $2. God bless them. And the maximum price is $325. Now, if you're used to looking at kind of the solds on eBay and you're like, oh my gosh, $325, that would be amazing. Well, that's um, this is all based on what people are asking. Sold data is not available for Etsy, so we have to go by what people are asking for. So then I did a little research, and this was really cute. Now come to find out that this, and this is what's really nice. Oops. If you click on this, it takes you right to the, to the um, listing. This is one of those things that you um, put your cigarettes in, right? Like it's a little flippy box. So it's not, it's not the same thing, right? It's not the same buyer. That's somebody kind of cool and hip. My buyer probably is a little bit more mature. Um, and then I was looking and I saw this one and yes, it could be a cigarette box, but it's not specifically a cigarette box, right? Um, I'm not sure that I would have, um, advertised this box so specifically as a cigarette box, but, and it, she doesn't ship around anywhere but in the UK, um, so she's not actually competition for me, right? Unless you're living in the, U in, in the UK, you can't buy that from her. So this one is way more ornate than mine and it's 6220 and it's musical. So now I have a range. Okay. So I could do somewhere between like $24 and, and $60, um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go look and see how many sales they have. So she has 51 sales. So she sold some stuff. 
I don't love her pictures. Um, so maybe, you know, my pictures are a little bit nicer. My pictures are really good. So I really show the box. I make sure to edit them, whiten them in Photoshop or GIMP. And uh, so it's a really nice piece. I think it's going to be really good. So that having been said, I really started to list it for $34.99. And then I thought, you know what? I am willing to wait a little bit for the right buyer to come along, maybe somebody from overseas. Um, I put it in the right category. It was made before 1998. I used all my keywords. The cool thing about Marmee Lead is that you can come down here and find all the keywords like cigarette box. It's not a cigarette case, so I didn't, I don't know if I put that in there. Hold on. Let's look real quick. Um, I might have put it in my words down here. I did not. Oh, yeah, cigarette cases. I put it once. It's not a cigarette case. It's a cigarette box, right? Uh, it A cigarette holder is actually those things that you hold your cigarette with, so it's not a cigarette holder. Um, but I did put tobacco, tobacco, easy for me to say, and mine's an inlaid vintage box. So I decided to go with $44.99. Um, people have asked, we just got in a conversation on one of the Facebook's groups, if 99 makes a difference. And it's funny, I couldn't, I could make it $45, right? That's actually how much it costs. That penny doesn't make a difference. But there's something weird in psychology of human beings that we only look at the first number. And it's been well documented, it's been researched in sales, in marketing, and everything. And so $44.99 looks cheaper than $45. The other thing is that I'm not really trying to sell a commodity item. This isn't, you know, this is vintage, right? You can't go and buy, so let's see if we can buy, find something that's exactly the same. Inlaid wooden box cigarettes. Uh, no, let's try that. Yes, I want to leave this site. Um, so there's mine. Oh, those are kind of, oh, that's kind of cool. 93. See, now that looks like it should be 93. Um, that's sort of like at 45, right? So very close to what mine is. We're similarly priced. Um, one last thing, guys. Sometimes it feels like you should price lower, right? Like, so if I listed it for 25, could I sell it faster? Like, that's kind of the thinking. And there's there's another thing that happens in psychology of buying that's really important to know is that when we see a deal and we think it's too good to be true, we think it's too good to be true, right? Like, so if I had priced that at $25, somebody could look at it and think, oh, yeah, that's really nice, but there kind of must be something wrong with it because all these other ones are $45, $90. Um, $45 seems to be the right price, uh, except for the fancier ones. Now, see, this is one where you could really go, okay, um, then this person is overpriced, right? Overpriced. But once this one sells, there isn't another one, right? There's this blue one. Um, so, so it also depends on how many people have something listed that's exactly like yours. And there's nobody that has one listed like mine. Um, you know, I picture this on a dark wooden desk in somebody's study, and they go and they grab their cigarette. Maybe their wife doesn't let them smoke in there, and they walk outside, or the wife buys it for her husband, or somebody overseas that still actively smokes in their house. They don't do that in the United States much anymore, but I know a lot of places smoking is different. So those are all things you want to think about. Um, I will put a link to uh, how to figure out who your seller, who your buyer is, um, in the notes also, because that's really important. And I put a lot of thought into that when I am pricing my vintage items for Etsy. So hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully.